Hello guys, I'm Rupesh and I welcome you back to the fifth episode of Getting Along with Flutter. In this session, we will be talking about various kinds of operators and loops. So without wasting any time, let's get started. So guys, let's start with arithmetic operators. As the name suggests, this class of operators contain those operators which can be used to perform arithmetic operations only. They are binary in nature. The examples of arithmetic operators are plus minus multiplied by divided divided by and modulus. Now guys, what are these symbols? Let's study each of these by taking some examples. For that, I'll first declare two variables and keep their values static for now. int a is equal to 5 and then b is equal to 7, let's say. And let's check the first arithmetic operator, which is addition. So a plus b, which must be 12 for this example. We'll check it. Yeah. The output comes out to be 12. Now we'll check the second operator, which is minus. Yeah, minus 2. As a is 5, b is 7, a minus b must be minus 2. Then the third operator, which we are supposed to check, is multiplication. We expect the answer to be 35 and the answer is 35. The next operator we are supposed to check is the division operator. Let's check it and we are good to go now. Do you expect decimal values here? Yes, we do expect decimal values. But let's say sometimes we don't want the decimal value to be so long. We expect only the integer value only the quotient of the division. In those cases, what we'll do is we'll use this division operator. And when I run now, you'll get the value to be zero. But let's say if my a value turns out to be, some, let's say 15, and I run again, you'll see the quotient to be two. Are you getting the point? The next operator we are supposed to check is the modulus symbol. What it does is it prints out the remainder of the division. Let's say we are 15 divided by 7 over here. The remainder is supposed to be 1 and that's what it does. Let's say I change the value of a here to be like something like 17 and I divide it again. The remainder here is expected to be 3. So let's see the output. Yeah, the remainder is 3 here too. So what modular symbol does is it prints out the remainder value of the division. Now the next kind of operators we'll be reading are called relational operators. This class of operators are used to perform relational operation on the operands. Few examples of relational operators are, we'll see them right now, greater than, less than, then of course, greater than equal to and same as less than equal to then not equal to. Fine. Let's code them and see how they work. We'll be taking the same example to study relational operators. Let's take A is equal to 5 and then B is equal to 7 and let's say we want to check that whether a is greater than b or not let's run it once and we expect the output to be false and yes it's false because a is 5 and b is 7 so anyhow 5 is not greater than 7 so the output must be false the next kind of operator is less then we'll run it again and here we expect the output to be true yeah it's true 
guys i missed one of the relational operators over here and that is equal to equal to let's check it once that a is equal to equal to b or not um we expect the answer to be false because of course a is 5 and b is 7 but why do we use this let's say i write a is equal to b and print it then you will see the answer to be something else yeah it's 7 you know why because the value of b is coming in place of a but if we want to check that whether a is equal to equal to b or not then we have to put the double equal to sign let's say we want to check now if a is not equal to b or not of course it's not equal to so we expect the answer to be true over here yeah it's true now guys the next kind of operators we'll be studying are called is operators what does it mean so basically this is a class of operators that are used to perform comparison on the operands we'll see that with an example the basic keywords used over here are is and is not let's see it with our example we'll take a variable int a is equal to 5 and i will check that if a is a string okay string should be capital and we run it over here let's see the value it's false because a is an integer over here and i am here claiming that a is a string so of course the value to be returned is false let's say i put a not sign over here and what I, what this print statement tells is a is not a string when i run it again you'll find the value to be true yes it's true why because a is an integer which is not a string so this statement is correct now guys the next kind of operators we'll be studying are called logical operators these class of operators are used to logically combine two or more conditions of the operands the examples of logical operators are and then or my bad or what is this i doing here and or and then not fine we are familiar with not but we'll see what does and and or do let's say uh, I declare another variable which is print b int b is equal to 7 and then I print something like um, a is greater than 4 and b is greater than let's say 10 fine and when I try to run it, you will see the answer to be false. You know why? Because here a is great, greater than 4, which is true because a is 5. And of course, 5 is greater than 4. But the second condition is something like b is greater than 10. Here b is 7. And 7 is not greater than 10. So this condition is true. But this condition is false. And when you use AND, you should make sure that to make anything true, both the conditions must be true. Let's say guys, I change the condition over here to be 5. And when I run it, you will find the answer to be true. Because as I said that this condition is true and then this condition is true. So true and true is true. But false and true is false. And of course, false and false is also false. We'll see that now let's say i put it 10 over here and i put 6 over here and when i run it it's false so the theory over here is true and true is only true and the rest of the cases will be false fine now see what does or do let's say i change the condition over here to be true and when i run it you will find the condition to be true 
here a is 5 and 5 is greater than 4 it is true here b is 7 and b is not greater than 10 which is false so true or false is true are you getting the point in and it was something like true and false is false but here true or false is true the only condition in which a or statement will be false is when both the conditions are false let's say i change the condition over here to be something like a is greater than 6 and when i run it you will find it to be false as i said that false or false is false so guys the next kind of operators we'll be studying are called increment and decrement operators these kind of operators are used to increase or decrease the value by an amount of one the examples of increment and decrement operators are plus plus and minus minus let's check them out with examples let's say here i what i do is i do plus plus a and when i run this statement you will find the value to be 6. Do you know what happened over here? Here the value was increased first and then the statement got printed. So this kind of increment is called pre-increment. Fine. The next example which we are going to see is something like print A++. Now when I run this Okay, my bad. I need to comment this out for once and then when I run this, you will find that the value of A has not changed. It's till now 5. But when I print it again, print A, you will find the value of A to be 6 over here. So what happened over here is that first the statement got executed then the value of a was increased by one so when in the second statement we printed a again what happened was the value of a which had increased by one got printed now so initially when we did a plus plus the value of a was five but in the second statement when we printed a the value of a became six fine now guys we'll be seeing the example for decrement there is nothing much left over here it is quite similar to increment the only difference over here is we'll be subtracting one from the value i'll be taking the same example the only difference i'll make over here is minus minus and i'll name it as pre decrement fine and I'll let me comment out these lines for post increment and when I run it I expect the value to be 4 and it's 4 let's see the case for post decrement first I do a minus minus and then I print a when, when I run it I expect the value to be 5 at first then 4 yes 5 at first then 4 Let's say guys, I want to print a value for five times. What procedure do you propose by which I can complete this task? What I can do is in a naive way, I can type print and then I'll type that number. Let's say it's six and I want to print it for five times. So what I'll do is I'll copy it and then I'll paste it. And again, I'll paste it and again, I'll paste it. This is four and five. And when I run it, I'll get six, five times. But from the day one, I said that I'm very lazy. I don't want to write such a long code. Bhaiya, ye to long code hai hi nahi. Aapne bas copy paste kya hai. Wo jo bhi hai. I don't want to write such long things. I don't want to copy paste even. I want the program to understand that I want to print this for five times. So automatically it must print 6 for 5 times. How 
can this be done for that we'll study loop fine first we'll be studying for loop guys what for loop actually is let's see its syntax first first i'll type the keyword for and then i have to initialize what i'll initialize a variable next i have to put the condition fine and then i will increment or decrement the variable let's understand it with an example i'll first call for then when i'll initialize i'll declare a variable first int i is equal to 0 the variable i has got a value 0 then the next condition will be something like let's say i want to print the value 6 5 times so the condition will be i must be less than 5 then the increment will be something like i plus plus fine and what do i want to print i want to print 6 so i'll print over here i'll call the print statement and i'll type 6 fine that's it and when i run it you will find the same output why is this easier because let's say i want to print it 10 times fine when i run it you'll see six tens so this is the beauty of using loops three lines of code can do a huge amount of task and it's very easy to understand too now guys we'll look into another kind of loop which are called while loops the syntax of while loop is something like while condition and then inside the body of the loop will complete the expression of the loop let's see it with an example in our previous case our motto was to print six for five times in that case the condition was i must be less than five so let's say i initialize i beforehand i is equal to zero now when i call the while keyword inside it i'll first of all declare the condition as i must be less than five and the expression is so will be of course something like print six and by the end of the loop i will have to increase the value of y if i don't do this then this will become an infinite loop so when i run it five sixes fine let's say i want to change the condition now i want 10 sixes so what i can do is i'll change the condition over here and here, here you, you can see we have 10 sixes now guys apart from these there are few other kinds of loops in dart they are like for each loop for in loop and do while loop i don't think we will need them while studying flutter but if in some project we come across them we will definitely study them beforehand i think this is clear for now now guys we'll start talking about arrays an array is an object used to store a collection of values this collection can be anything like numbers, objects, strings, or even more arrays. Arrays can be used to store multiple values of one variable. Each value can be accessed through the index of the array. The index starts from zero. You need to remember this. People usually forget it, but the index of an array always starts from zero. Let's understand array with an example. First, we'll see how we declare an array. To declare an array, all we do is var, and then we write the array name, like that, name, and equal to square brackets. And inside this, we'll put the values of the array. Let's say I put, put an integer first, then I put a float, data type number let's say value of pi and then i write a string let's say rupesh and put a semicolon then when i print 
this array oh my god my name spelling is wrong now seriously yeah when i run it you will find this array gets printed let's say i want to access this six only i don't want the rest of the values i want to access the first value only what i have to do is i need to type print then i'll specify it by typing the index why is happening i'm not able to write the spelling of name now yeah index 0 run so you will find this prints the value 6 first let's say i want to access the string now so the index of the string is somewhat like 0 1 2 so i want to print the value which is pre present at the index 2 so when i run it you will see the string gets printed now fine so this is what this is how we declare an array and this is how we access the indices of an array now guys to ease our task dart provides us with various functions to use while working on arrays i have written a few functions we will walk through each of them and see what task do they perform let's execute the code first as we see the first statement says that print array name dot first as the name suggests of this function the first element of the array will get printed hence a gets printed same like that print array name dot last as the name suggests again the last element of the array will be printed the next function is something like print array is empty this function checks that if this array is empty or not if the array is empty then it will print true here since the array is not empty it will it prints false let me clear this out once so that i can show you what happens if the array is empty no element okay guys i'll have to comment this out first because there are no first element and there are no last elements either so let's run it now and i hope it shows false sorry it shows true now and yes it's true because the array is empty over here and it's true now i'll uncomment this and i'll paste the values fine now the last function over here is array dot length what this does is it prints the value of the length of array here the here the array has five elements so this function is supposed to print the value 5 because the length of the array is 5 and yes it does that so that's it for today guys i hope you understood everything we talked about today keep revising and keep learning keep hustling bye bye take care